Hello, Startup Vision. My name is Bruno Zamberlin. I am the founder of Hypersurfaces, and I'm very happy to be here today. Hello, Bruno. Thank you so much for being with us on Startup Vision TV. So the definition of hypersurfaces is seamlessly merging the physical and data worlds. So can you explain what you do at hypersurfaces? And also, can you explain um, what is a neural network in AI and how you use it to make things smart? Yes, okay. It, you know, hypersurfaces is this idea of turning everything around us, literally everything, into um, an intelligent surface. Um, so imagine any object that is around you right now, like this mirror or this wooden door or anything made of, of, of glass or plastic or metal, um, and any shape, any size. And imagine to transform these surfaces into a, an intelligent hypersurface that is aware of any possible event that happens on its surface. So you have to, to think that every time we interact with an object, this object emits a vi vibration, a tiny, small vi vibration that we cannot hear, but special sensors can pick up these vibrations. And based on the vibration, they can understand what just happened. They can understand if I'm touching an object, am I swiping, am I moving it, am I interacting in any form, is it raining onto it, right? So any impact between two objects or between a person and, a, and the world around us can be described through vibrations. So what we do, to answer your second question, is that we use neural networks in order to create this intelligence that is able to listen to the vibrations and transform that into information. So as um, a door becomes aware of what is happening, am I being open? Am I being closed? Is someone knocking? Is it raining outside? Is there an earthquake? Okay. And the way we do this, as um, it's happening more and more in the deep learning field, is that we collect a lot of data of vi vibrations happening anywhere. And we have this huge data set of like uh, millions of uh, vi vibrational events. And uh, this is how we, we do it. This is how we can basically transform objects into hypersurfaces. So you, you, you want, and you said a little bit, but you want to revolutionize the way we live and disrupt the relationship between people and physical objects through uh, technology. Can we talk uh, about the applications of IoTs or intelligent surfaces in our future life, what it will bring to us? Yes, it's, it's you know, it's this, interface with the world is right now today we are using a tiny touch screen on a mobile phone or a or a button or a switch or a, you know whatever it is and um, um, like anything can can be can become interactive and uh, the i think the most fun part of of our job right now is to look at what inventors and designers and creative minds are coming up with when they um, have uh, uh, hypersurfaces, basically. So um, the, our small uh, tiny sensor that has a chipset inside with some artificial intelligence algorithm that, that is running inside of the sensor. And they can stick it into any, any product they want, like a a bottle of water or uh, the steering wheel of a car or, uh, or your floor or uh, you know, a road, anywhere you want. And uh, the applications are just limitless. Like the metaphor I always use is the one of the mobile phone. I don't know anyone that before the invention of the mobile phone needed a mobile phone. 
uh, nobody said, oh my God, I need an iPhone and then I need an app store and I need this app that does this and this app that does that. Um, and yet, like, like now our life is completely changed because of this small device, right? So this is what I want to happen with hypersurfaces is that I don't know what an architect, what a automotive interior designer, what a, um, a biologist will, will do with hyper surfaces. Okay, so what, what really happens is that every time I see a professional with hyper, hyper surfaces in, in their hands, I see a new idea that I didn't think of before. You know, there was this, this beautiful installation where like they were converting the, uh, they were counting raindrops basically um, with our se sensors and they were kind of transforming like uh, rain raindrops into uh, lights. But then imagine like uh, inside of a vehicle where you can touch anywhere and the, the car knows that you're touching the, the glass of the window or you're swiping on the steering wheel or you're touching an air vent uh, to, to control all these elements. Yeah, and uh, to, be, to be clear, Bruno, when, when you say that, and I saw your videos, you know, for example, if you touch a door, it means you want the door open. I mean, you can organize that. And then if you touch the window, as you say, in your car, it means you want it down or half down. Is that it? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Like, you know, right now, if you want to touch like like an air vent, for example, to, to control the temperature, right now you have to open the touch screen and then go into air conditioning, air vent number three, I want to control the temperature. So you have to click it like four times while you are driving. Imagine if you can just touch it directly, the object you want to control, and, and kind of add this second layer of interaction where the air vent remains exactly the same. So the, you know, the, the, the component is exactly the same. You're not adding a button or a film or anything. And uh, the functionality is exactly the same, but you add a second layer of interaction where actually that object also becomes aware of the fact that you might touch it. And then if, if you touch it, that something is gonna happen. In this case, you're gonna control the temperature of that air vent. So, you know, we see the unlimited aspects of artificial intelligence. And you say the possibilities are limited only by creative imagination. Should we be scared about that? Or do you believe, like Luc Julia, uh, VP Innovation at Samsung, that artificial intelligence doesn't exist and we should only talk about augmented intelligence? What do you think? Oh, really in interesting. You know, like I, I am a, I think it's a, it's a crucial question of, of these days. And I think our, the next generation is going to thank us or blame us um, based on, on, on how we, we use this opportunity. I think um, it's, a, it's a responsibility for us to, to democratize like the, 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 the usage and the empowerment um, of people through AI. I think, I think if we let just a, a few big companies to, to own AI, let them, they, they will own the world. They will own like every, literally every business out there. AI basically will depend on the people who make it and who use it, in fact. That's absolutely, what I, I, absolutely. And it's crucial that we see what data have been used to build a certain AI that we build some transparency mm -hmm. on the on the journey of the data, on the journey of this algorithm, and understand if there's any bias in this algorithm. You know, it's a, so the more we democratize this process with platforms like Hyperservices and many many others, the better. Yeah, and so what is next for you for Hyperservices? Tell us. Oh, I, so we are launching the platform now and uh, I'm really excited because like you can use it even if you have no background in AI or in computer science, you can really use it. And I'm just gonna, you know, like to quote Brian, you know, I, I, am, I am basically planting the seed and I want to see the plant growing now. <laughs> That's great. So we wish you the best of everything. It's, it's really great what you do. And um, thank you for sharing all that with us today on Startup Vision. Thank you. Thank Monique. you very much for your time. Thank you.